The following is transcribed. Welcome to Bat Soup, the never nutritious, definitely delicious podcast dedicated to the old time radio adventures of Superman and the dynamic duo. Buckle your utility belts for lots of interrogation, plenty of genealogical questions, and greedy motives galore. Before we get to today's adventure, let's pause for this important message. Surprises are great fun when it comes to birthdays or Christmas or even Valentine's Day. But they're not so great, oh, say, when you're shopping for caskets at the funeral home and someone jumps out at you. No, sir. That's crossing a line, fellows and girls, and no decent fat super would do it. Well, some surprises just aren't fun for anyone when you get right down to it, gang. Uh, That's why our latest swell prize found inside specially marked cans of never nutritious, definitely delicious bat soup. Well, you know, those little sections of tailpipe from the Batmobile? Well, they've been cleaned and sanitized just as slick as you please. So there's no foreign material of any kind on them at all. And that means no surprises for all you clever, inquisitive kids out there who like to find ways of using our prizes that we didn't think about. See? No surprises for us, either. Everybody wins, and everybody can relax and just enjoy this swell prize for what it is. A nice, innocent collectible. And it's only available from Bat Soup. Available wherever fine podcasts are sold. Return to your homes. There's nothing to see here. And now, Bat Soup presents today's adventure, part six of The Dead Voice, as originally broadcast on October 3rd, 1946. Faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman! Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents... The Adventures of Superman. Today, Superman and his friend Batman are still trying desperately to pick up the trail of Batman's young companion, Robin, unaware that at any moment they may be too late to save the boy's life. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. Say, uh, which is it? Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Is it a button? Well, it's anybody's guess until you open your package of Kellogg's Pep and see which one of those three kinds of prizes you'll get. So every prize is always an exciting surprise. Sure, it might be a a beautiful full-color bird picture from a series of 24, each with a description on the reverse side so that you can reel off the name of any of these birds around. Or uh, it might be a model of a fighting plane, one of seven thrilling plane models in the series, all made of colored cardboard and easy to assemble. Or uh, your next pep prize might be one of Pep's 18 slick comic buttons, picturing one of your favorite comic strip characters to pin on your beanie cap or your jacket. And say, speaking of characters, you'll be a mighty happy character yourself when you dig into your bowl of Kellogg's Pep, because every spoonful of these crisp whole wheat flakes tickles your taste with its keen, catchy, sunshine flavor. Every bowlful is a treat. Every dish of Pep just about doubles the fun of breakfast. So get going, gang. Ask Mom for Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, and see whether the prize inside your package is a bird, a plane, or a button. And now, the adventures of Superman. Certain that Dick Grayson, who was really Robin, was in the hands of Eric Larson, an escaped convict who had sworn to destroy the youngster, Batman and Superman followed their only clue a circus clown who they believed had helped Larson escape from prison. But when they arrived at the circus, they were dismayed to learn that the clown had quit and left with no forwarding address. Meanwhile, in a bungalow on the outskirts of Metropolis, Larson had just finished telling Dick that he would be shot as soon as a man named Marsh appeared when Willie, a henchman, announced the arrival of the mysterious Mr. Marsh. As we continue now, Marsh, a slender, neatly dressed man with a toothbrush mustache, follows the huge Willie into the room 
where Dick Grayson, his hands tied behind him, stands before the hollow-cheeked Eric Larson. Listen. Send your man out of the room, please, Larson. Well, Willie's all right, Mr. Marsh. You needn't worry about it. Send him out of the room, I said. Okay, okay. Go on out and wait in the hall, Willie. Okay. Sure, boy. Close the door off to you, please. Okay. I tell you, you're wasting your time, Marsh. This boy is Dick Grayson. He looks like a Grayson, but I must be certain. Here, have a look at this, Marsh. I took this wallet off him. It's got his name in it and his address. He lives over on Wickersham Drive with that rich playboy, Bruce Wayne. I wish that playboy were here right now. We'd fix your clocks. I see. So your name is Dick Grayson. So what? What's this all about? Who are you and what do you Quiet, want? punk. What were the names of your father and mother, boy? Mr. and Mrs. Grayson, of course. Now, look, Marsh, you're not going to get anywhere with this. Wait, Larson. There's something else in this wallet. A snapshot. Don't you touch that. This is very interesting. A young man and a young woman in the costumes of circus aerialists. Put that away. I didn't notice the snapshot. Let's see it. Keep your dirty hands off that picture, Larson. Both of you. Say, that's the kid's father and mother. Are they, Dick? That's none of your business. I think I know a way to find out. Ah, here's my cigarette lighter. What are you going to do? This snapshot was covered with cellophane. Apparently, Dick treasured it. But if it isn't of his parents, I'm sure he won't mind my burning it, so... No, don't! It's the only picture I've got of them. I can only get these ropes off... And these people are your parents. Yes. Now put that picture away. Stop handling it with your... Now, you see, Marsh, he's the right... Just kid. a minute. What were your parents' names, Dick? I want a straight answer now. John and Yvonne. Where was your mother born? In France. Now, are you satisfied, Just Marsh? Just one more question. Did you ever see your paternal grandfather, Dick? Your father's father? What's it to you? This is important to you as well as to me. Answer me, Dick. Did you ever see your paternal grandfather... No, I didn't. My grandfather was angry with my father because he joined a circus. And then because he married my mother, who was an aerialist in the circus, too. He wrote my father he never wanted to see him again. So none of us ever went near him. Your grandfather was very poor, wasn't he? Poor? Shucks, no, he was a millionaire. A millionaire? Correct. I'm satisfied, Larson. This is the boy. Take care of him. (gasps) What? Wait a minute. You didn't tell me the kid's grandfather was a millionaire. What difference should that make to you? What difference? Why, when I finish this kid and his grandfather dies, as you say he's dying now... Grandfather dying? Well, well, go on, Larson. Then you'll inherit his millions. Exactly. According to Mr. Grayson's will, if anything happens to his grandson Dick here, I, his companion and secretary, inherit the entire estate. Sure. What? You mean my grandfather wants to leave me his money? That's right. He's got soft-hearted in his old age. He even wants to see you. As a matter of fact, he thinks I'm going to bring you to him. Oh, I'll be... Now I get it. You're getting millions out of this, Marsh, and you're giving me a measly $5,000 for taking the risk, doing your dirty work. I got you out of jail, didn't I, Larson? Yeah, but... And I'm giving you the chance to revenge yourself on this boy, the person responsible for your prison sentence. So what? I still say five grand isn't enough for this job. I say it is, Larson. Not when it means you're getting millions. I want my share. You're getting all you deserve. Don't give me that. If I talked, where would you be? It's like that, eh? That's the way it could be. Unless you want to discuss giving me a decent cut. I see. How much would you consider fair? I want half of what you get. Fifty-fifty split. Be reasonable, Larson. If I guarantee you, let's say, a half million, how would that strike you? Half a million? Well, Well, that might be okay. But you've got to put it in writing. I'll put it in writing. As soon as you get rid of Dick Grayson. (laughs) That'll be a pleasure. Now do it right now. Now, now wait a minute, Larson. I warn you, you're putting a noose around your neck. (laughs) Listen to the little punk. What's more, you'll even be done out of your share of my inheritance. Now, look here. This man's a crook, Larson. Don't just stand there, Larson. Do away with him. Okay, here I go. Hey, boys, come here quick. Get away, Willie. No, listen, you've got to listen. They're on to you. What? Who is? The cops. What are you talking about, Willie? The radio. Go listen to the radio. Go ahead, boss. The cops, they're on to you. Yippee! What? I told you, pal. Hurry up, boss. Come on, listen to the radio. This sounds bad, Larson. You bet it's bad, brother. Worse than that for you. Willie, you watch this little punk. Come on, Marsh. Let's see what this is all about. Repeat. All cars in District Precincts. Be on the lookout. 
out for one Eric Larson, who was suspected of being alive and of having abducted a 14-year-old boy named Dick Grayson. How could they know that, Larson? Uh, I don't know. Larson is 43 years old, 5 feet 10, about 160 pounds, brown hair, sallow complexion, black eyes. This man is dangerous. Report any information on him to headquarters immediately. That is all. Breakfast. How'd they find out I was alive? I can't imagine. But I'm afraid that means... That drug you sent me, it was no good. What are you talking about? The prison authorities declared you dead. They even buried you. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I can't understand it. I... I'm worried. They'll find me. I'll never get out this time. They'll throw the book at me. Send me up for life. Maybe... No, no, no. Take it easy. Don't lose your head. I'll see you safely through this, Larson. You... You will? Yes. Go in and finish Dick Grayson. Then I'll take you to the Grayson yacht and we'll sail away to some place where you can live in peace. No. No, nothing doing. I can't kill that Grayson kid now. What do you mean? The cops know I'm alive. They know I grabbed the Grayson kid. But I sent those notes to Bruce Wayne telling him I'd get Grayson. So now if they find him finished, they'll know I did it. I'll get the chair. I'll... Don't worry, Larson. They won't find you. No. No, I can't take the chance. Oh, yes, you can, Larson. And you will. No, I... I... Hey, what... What's the idea of pulling a gun on me? Because I plan to use it on you. What? No, no, Marsh, look. This I... works out very well. I'm going to kill you, Larson. me? But I... Yes, of course. This works out beautifully. You see, I killed you and Grayson. Then call the police and tell them I got here just too late to prevent you from shooting Dick Grayson. You see? Why, you... You dirty double-crosser. Did you think I'd be fool enough to let you live? Knowing all you do about me? Yeah, but, but why did you get me out of jail if To you... get rid of Grayson for me. Then I was arranging for you to accept the blame for it. Now I'll just change my plans a bit. I'll shoot you, then Grayson. And then call the police and tell them I shot you trying to get away. No. No, you... You wouldn't do that, Marsh. I wouldn't? For several million dollars? Just watch this, sucker. No! No! <laughs> We'll be back in a moment with the exciting climax of today's episode. So stand by. Say, whenever you see a fellow or girl race into breakfast, you can guess right off there's probably a bowl of Kellogg's Pep waiting at the breakfast table. Sure, because when Pep leaves off the menu, it's mighty hard to wait for breakfast. You keep thinking of how, how tender and how crisp those whole wheat flakes are. And you keep looking forward to your first taste of Pep's sunshine flavor. And then, when you do dig into your bowl of pep, was there ever such a smooth treat? And say, while we're speaking of smooth, did you ever see anything to beat the slick prizes pep gives you? Three different kinds of prizes, one or the other in each package of pep. For instance, uh, your next prize may be a bird picture in brilliant color with a full description on the reverse side. Collect all 24 of them, and will you be wise on these birds? Or uh, maybe your next pep prize will be one of seven colored cardboard plane models, easy to put together. Or uh, maybe it'll be a bright colored comic button, picturing a favorite comic strip character, 18 and all to pin on your jacket or your beanie cap. There's one or the other of these three knockout prizes in every pep package. So ask Mom to be sure and get you Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. In the small room where he is held prisoner... Dick Grayson, who is really Robin, has been working feverishly at his already loosened bonds. As the huge Willie, worried at what he has heard on the radio, stands near the closed door, his back half turned to Dick. Now, as a shot rings out from behind the closed door to the next room, Willie jumps with fright. Listen, what was that, Willie? Why, that... that was a shot. Uh-huh. Could, uh, could our little playmates be quarreling, do you think? I gotta see... Hey, how'd you get them ropes off your hand? A little gremlin did it for me, Junior. Now, you big gorilla, I'm going to use this lasso to show you what it feels like to be tied up. Oh, yeah? I'm going to pin your wrist. Hey, hey, what? Get this rope off of me. Your rope, doggy. Hey. I'll make sure you stay that way. Because I've got things to do and fail. Using the silken rope he always carries for his operations in the guise of Robin. Batman's young companion snakes it around Big Willie's ankles, trips him, then flashes it around and around the huge man from feet to shoulders, trussing him up helplessly. Then, thrusting a handkerchief into Willie's mouth, Robin steps quickly and softly to the door, opens it cautiously, and is about to make a run for it when suddenly... 
Stand where you are, Grayson. <gasps> Mr. Marsh! That's right. I've just finished Eric Larson. Now I'm going to finish you. Almost free, Dick Grayson is trapped by the murderous Mr. Marsh. The cunning brain behind Eric Larson's amazing escape from prison. The man to whom the boy's death is worth millions of dollars. How can Superman and Batman, hundreds of miles away, come to Robin's help now? We'll know tomorrow, so don't miss the next thrilling episode in this exciting story. Tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Say, when you wake up in the morning and you can see your breath on the frosty air, gang, that's Crumble's weather. Just calls for a toasty kind of cereal with zip and go. Calls for toasty words like crisp, crunchy, Crinkly. Crumbles, sure, just fits, doesn't it? Kellogg's Crumbles, sort of sweet and mellow rich. The only cereal in the whole wide world made in those little crinkly shreds of good whole wheat. It's Crumbles, weather gang. Time for crisp, crunchy, crinkly Kellogg's Crumbles. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. That was part six of The Dead Voice from The Adventures of Superman. Thank you for listening. Never miss an episode of Bat Soup by subscribing on your favorite podcatcher. Bat Soup, a proud member of the Moonlight Audio Theater family of podcasts, is also available on YouTube and Facebook and will soon be heard as part of the Mutual Audio Network's Saturday Story Circle. Learn more at bat-supe.podbean.com. Well, that'll wrap things up for this episode of Bat Soup, but be sure to tune in next time when you'll hear Miss Ellis say... They're two of a kind. They steal the pennies out of a beggar's tin cup. Now, here is our star, Vincent Price. Ladies and gentlemen, as responsible parents, you never think of allowing your children to play with poison... And as responsible Americans, it's your duty to protect them from the dangers of the poison we call prejudice. Here in America, racial and religious hatred does exist. Sustained by the political adventurers and plain crackpots who are willing to scrap the democratic way of life to attain their own ends. Prejudice in America is centered in their adult philosophy. But unless we guard ourselves and our families, it can find its way into our own lives. Then the poison would do its work, undermining America's unity, sabotaging our prestige abroad, and wrecking our ideal of individual freedom. In your family life, you can effectively carry on a campaign against prejudice. Our youngsters grow up with a pride in their country. Teach them that part of that pride is our tradition of accepting or rejecting people on their individual worth, not on the basis of race or religion or color. Remember... Freedom and prejudice can't exist side by side. If you choose freedom, fight prejudice.